Всего ранку холодно, капитаны. Ммм. Mm. Фёрс. Es krüge. Schas, Kapitän. I'm. I'm your Edith. I'm on an Eastdale Rib Rendezvous. Eastdale Rib Rendezvous is a rigid inflatable boat adventure weekend on the glorious west coast of Scotland, one of the most stunning areas in the UK for boaters due to the fantastic scenery, myriad islands, pristine waters and amazing wildlife. Ribbers from all over the UK and Ireland meet in Easdale Island, 25 minutes south of the bustling town of Oban for a weekend of hardcore boating with food and entertainment provided in the island on a Saturday night. This is a long-established free event run by volunteers, with many happy participants returning year after year. Once the boats are registered at the Seafarry office, ribbers are then encouraged to explore the local area in the company of other boats for safety reasons and also ensure everything is working before the main run on the Saturday. I was delighted to be invited aboard Sula, Douglas Curley's ribcraft, to film the outing. We were accompanied by James Booth and his rib, who also took the stunning drone footage used in the video. We were on a mission to meet and welcome a couple of Irish ribs coming all the way from County Kerry. Paul and his family made the third boat the hour shakedown run, as the organisers advised travelling in a minimum of three boats per group. Sea conditions were perfect and the low cloud base around the island of Scarborough and the Corrie Vrecken Gap added to the atmosphere. As it was now lunchtime, we headed into Pig's Bay for our picnic lunch, and rafted beside another two ribs who had also had the same idea. It was sandwiches and smiling faces all around, as James launched the drone for a stunning overhead view. Then we said farewell to our dining partners, as we heard the Irish ribs were just leaving Craig House on the island of Jura. We were almost passing ships in the middle of the night, in the now low visibility light. Fortunately, it's hard to miss such a big rib. Luckily, they also saw us, as I suspect it would have been hard catching up with this 11 plus metre boat, powered by two 300 horsepower outboards. 
Mission accomplished, the ill then started heading back towards Easdale. The shores and the coastlines glisten With each wave breaking As our nation's forgotten soul starts the journey Then, as luck would have it, the RNLI lifeboat appeared out of the blue of the Corryvreckan whirlpool. And I'm sorry, but there was no way the ribs were going to let it get in front. On the Eastdale rib rendezvous, fuel burn comes second to fun, and the race had begun. Because I'm sorry, but the RNLI guys were not going to let the bunch of rubbers take the lead without putting on a burst of speed. At the end of the race, I declared it a draw, and total respect to the lifeboat crew for making our day. I'm delighted to say they seemed to enjoy our company as much as we did theirs. Back at Easdale, we enjoyed a relaxing evening in the Puffer Bar. And I'm living proof that every dog has his day. And day one was done. Saturday morning, although it had rained during the night, the eased off at Easdale as participants readied their boats for the tour of the day. Tube pressures were checked and fuel tanks refilled. Boats collected for the start of the main event as Douglas toured the sound of Easdale with local Ling Piper, Innes McQueen, whose piping officially started the main ERR event. Our thanks go to Innes for playing his part exceptionally well. Did you go to the mod? Yes. Yeah, I do, I do, yes. You compete, so... Is it no, easy? I don't really compete, I just really go You like the, 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 the socialising. Yeah. You know, uh, it's coming to over next year, actually, the mod. Uh, You're originally from here? Yes. Yeah. Then at 9.30am sharp, Tony Hill announced the plan was to head around the Cairns of Col, which is approximately 40 nautical miles away. Then boats could decide if they wanted to return back the same way or continue with a round of the island of Mull. Tony then set a steady pace of 22 knots as lead boat and Celtic Nomad. And everyone followed and it sure was a sight to see, with approximately 60 ribs heading out to sea. The shores and the coastlines glisten With each wave breaking As our nation's forgotten soul starts the journey
And if it looks spectacular from the air, it was even more exciting at water level, as 60 propellers fair churn up a sea. I can also vouch that a wind gusting to approximately force 5 can make a fair chop too. You're at the tail end of the fleet to ensure everyone got away safely. The Blue Zapcat, skipper by Seamus, was the smallest boat in the fleet. And as I watched it bounce along, I recalled talking to Seamus earlier. Is, it, is this one of the fastest boats in the, the race, you think? The fastest. <laughs> the fastest. We know your future. Ah, well. You're, you're, we'll, we'll be eating your wake then on the way up. Incidentally, Seamus holds a world record speed for his class of boat which, if my memory serves me right, was 67.3 knots or thereabouts. A fantastic water speed for a four-metre boat. However, sea conditions on the Saturday prevented him using his boat to the full potential. All the boats were now taking air as we headed up the Firth of Lorne, towards the more sheltered waters of the Sound of Mull. But to reach them, we had to negotiate the last more tide race, which I knew would be testing even for the larger boats, never mind the fast but lightweight Zapcat. At the start of the tide race, even the 7 plus metre boats were taking a pounding. Seamus tried to tuck in behind the delta rib, hoping for a smoother passage. But the pyramid-shaped waves were coming from in all directions. Once through the tide race, the waves became more predictable again, until we finally reached the sheltered waters of the Sound of Mull. And then it was mostly plain sailing all the way to Tobermory. Which gave me time to have a quick interview with Douglas. Hey Douglas, what do you think of the show so far? Then it was time to turn into Tobermory for hot drinks and to dry off. And those that needed fuel could also get it here. It was while I was walking the boardwalks that I heard a familiar voice, and I just had to ask. And excuse me, sir, can you tell me who you are? My name's Dennis from Suffolk, uh, near Ipswich. Um, other other names I've had have been Small River, Silly Bugger, and Big Plums. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm honoured today to meet <laughs> the very intrepid and famous Mr. Donnie okay. Wilkins, the gardener. <laughs> it's always great to put many names to our face. 
and we could have talked forever, but it was now time to leave as we still had a way to go to reach the cairns of call. It's a ten mile open sea crossing from Tobermory to the Cairns of Col, so we're glad it wasn't as rough as the Lismore tide race. It doesn't take long in a fast trip, unless of course you get delayed by a pod of dolphins getting in your way. Serendipitous encounters with sea life always makes her day. And now the cairns of call were not so far away. The cairns are a series of rocky reefs off the north end of call. Stunning sandy bays intersperse the reefs, and on a sunny day the water is Caribbean blue. But it's grey on an overcast day. Ribs were rafted for lunch in every little bay. After lunch we headed round to Aranagour for a quick drink in the Col Hotel. And on the way we were lucky enough to spot a small minky whale. I guess it was feeding in the shallows as it broke surface several times. Then it was ever onward to Arnagower, where we rafted up alongside the other ribs in the island pier. I enjoyed the short walk to the Col Hotel, as my sea legs felt a little wobbly after being in the boats for so long. After a quick drink it was time to get underway again. We decided to return to Easedale the same way we came. It was an uneventful run home and we arrived back at Easdale in the early evening. A full day at sea left me a little tired, so after some supper I had an early night and day two was done. It was a 10am start on a wet Sunday morning as Tony announced the day's route plan. Uh, you're going to go through the Corrie Vecton, uh, the Corrie Vecton Whirlpool. It's not a big tide, there won't be a lot going on, but it's the best run of the day. And then if you head out to an island called Ilach and Eve, um, as you go through the Corrie Brecon, this looks like you're right, and there's a sort of string of islands, and it's the left-hand island. island. Understandably, many boats were packing up to travel home for work on Monday. Douglas was lead boat as we headed out the sound of Easedale. Heading for the grey dogs in the Corrie Vreck and Whirlpool. Although it was raining, the sea conditions were perfect, allowing us to maintain a 22 knot cruising speed. It 
was now raining cats and dogs as we passed through the northern entrance to the Grey Dogs, the name of the tide race that runs through the narrow gap between the islands of Lunga and Scarba. As we waited for everyone to regroup again, I couldn't help but think the Grey Dogs were aptly named on a damp grey day. Then we set off for the Corrie Brecon Gap, beginning through the southern entrance of the Grey Dogs. The tide race was rather disappointing as it was neat tides so not much water flow. We then traversed the eastern coast of Scarba before entering the Gap of Corrie Brecon. Douglas aimed for the eye of the whirlpool. But once again, because it was neat tides, it's hard to believe this is the third largest whirlpool in the world. Once again we paused for lunch in Pigs Bay, but this time, unlike a stop two days previously, it was too wet for James to launch a drone for an overhead view of the boats. I too was limited to using a waterproof GoPro for the footage of this trip. Then it was full speed ahead for the Garbalochs. Tony had gone ahead and anchored Celtic Nomad in the Shelter Lagoon for Elach and Eve to give assistance to everyone else landing in this special island. Then two of the smaller ribs volunteered to ferry everyone ashore. It's not the easiest island to land on. Elach and Eve, Isle of the Saints, is now looked after by Historic Scotland. And when you land here, you are walking in ancient history. St Brendan, originally from County Kerry in Ireland, landed here in the year 542 to set up a monastic settlement, and amazingly, the remains of his B5 cells can still be seen. I believe the original monastery suffered at the hands of raiding Vikings, but in the 12th century, this chapel was constructed and once again ancient monks came here for solitude and prayer. Various other ruins exist on the site, including a Christian graveyard and the remains of a 19th century farm. As the rest of the rivers headed uphill to see a small standing stone marked with a cross and believed to be the grave of St Columba's mother, Ethne, I stayed behind to listen to the silence of a special place and in my inner mind I heard the monks quietly go about their business. All too soon it was time to head back to the boats and return to Easdale. And as the rain had now stopped, James launched his drone to capture the closing scenes of Easdale Rib Rendezvous 2023.
as well as crediting Skerry War and Innes. I would also like to thank James for his fantastic drone footage, and also to Freddie, Four Fingers, who is James' drone catcher. Freddie was also the commander speaking Ukrainian, while Seamus the captain spoke Gaelic in the spoof intro of The Hunt for Red October. And we all had a lot of fun making this video, but also knew it would be alright in the night. This video was my view of the Easdale Rib Rendezvous, and everyone will have a different experience because the route was not set in stone. Some boats were happy enough to go to Tobermory then return. Other boats went to call before doing the full round of Mull. Some of the larger ribs even decided to continue on to St Kilda's before going home. The map showed the route Sula took over the three days and we had a whale of a time. The main idea behind the rendezvous is for boating in company of other like-minded people and having fun with safety in numbers. I think everyone achieved that. If you have a rib and enjoyed the video but never been in an Easdale rendezvous, why not consider coming along in 2024? Thanks also go to everyone who came and supported the event. Your attendance is always much appreciated and we hope to see you all again next year. Finally, I must give a big thank you to Douglas Curley, Tony Hill, and all the other organisers and inhabitants of Easdale and Elena Beach who give their time to host the event to ensure it is a success. Thank you. Thank you.